Welcome everyone to my podcast, The Mastery of Emotion and Speak Your Truth, and number 16 today. Like always, I'm talking about numbers a little bit at the beginning. So let's go dive in before I'm going to introduce you my guest today. But some of you may be new at that guest from the previous podcast, podcast number 12, where we spoke about the love. But anyway, let's go dive in a little bit around the number, number 16. So like a number... I would like to say beautiful number, like every number is beautiful. So one and six. So, so the one is the creation. That's our, one is the beginning. Oh, I hope so. Can you see that? <laughs> oh, no. Sorry, the glitches. Okay, let me just only keep it carry on. I've never seen a glitch like this before. It's fascinating. Oh, thank you. <laughs> can, I, can I stop? Can you hear me? It's like... <laughs> but can yeah, you hear but me? Sure. Yeah. I can hear you, yeah. Okay. Oh, listening. so everyone experienced the glitches in the matrix. Everyone experienced now. So everyone know what I'm talking about. Let's go. 16, before this okay. something is happened again. What's going on? That's a mission. Okay, so number 16, the one, like I said, is the number, we're starting number, number creation. And number six, the beautiful number as well, because that number is saying, let it go and create something new. Don't hold on your limiting beliefs. So today we would like to dive in about the LGBT creation, how we can create our reality in a new world, new beginning, and etc. So that would be amazing, amazing number. Like always, um, I'm linking the podcast with the topic, with the subject today. Welcome, welcome everyone who is watching us. And let's go invite now to talk a little bit about yourself the Frank he was in the podcast number 12 and we well, we talk about the power of God power of love that was the whole the spec, aspects about the love hello Mark so hello Frank how are you doing hi Gabriella I'm doing fantastic my name is Frank Joseph by the way I don't understand yes, the context of Frank but my name is Frank Joseph and Frank Joseph Frank Joseph okay. yeah okay yeah some people like to shorten names you know oh frank but if i allow people to call me just some random name which is not my name then i'll never know who myself i want to be mirrored who what i acknowledge myself to be you know okay. and i think our names are very important and um i think that we have to be intentional with with especially the sounds the sounds that we identify with and um, it's an honor to be here, Gabrielle. I appreciate you and your work and who you are and your soul and speaking our truth. And it's what I stand for. So I'm happy to be here with you now. Thank you so much. And by the way, thank you for reminding me. You are Frank Joseph. You're not just only a Frank, but also you've got a, another name, Joseph. That's really essential. I, I think that's really valuable and that's really important to say. The same for me. When the people just call me Gabby, I said, who is Gabby? Yeah, what are you talking uh, about? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. That's a Gabriella. Yes, that's great. But uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, thank you. And that's also the thinking, like you said, speak your truth. If any your voice is shaking, yeah, that's beautiful. That's a beautiful set. Would you like to only say in the few words? Because some of the people who are watching us, some of the souls didn't know anything about you. Sorry, I'm shaking again. But can you please, Frank, uh, just speak about yourself yes. a little bit? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, so I've had a very extensive and deep journey of of teaching. Uh, very early on in my path, I, I was learning emotional intelligence and neuro-linguistic programming and different alternative psychological approaches to our personal development. Then eventually, my path extended and I began to host retreats around the world on human connection. Mm -hmm. And we did these mega retreats all around the world in Australia, Hawaii, Costa Rica. Wow. And it was basically a big experiment to see how deeply we can communicate as a diverse group of humans, which is interesting because later down in my path, it all made sense of why I was guided in this way. And so I learned about relationships. I learned about the heart. I learned about how to speak emotional intelligence and, and, uh, obviously speaking, clearly communicating, clearly thinking, and all these development ways of approaching our, our growth in life. Um, then I went to my ancestral lands in about 2016 in the countryside of England, 
and it's a very much a village that's trapped back in time. There's three converging ley lines. Ley lines are basically bio, electro, uh, geomagnetic currents, mm -hmm. energy mm -hmm. currents. Okay, geomagnetic means geography, magnetic ley lines. So there are electrical currents that go through the earth, and there's certain points where they cross. This is where you'll find the ancient civilizations and the monuments or megalithic uh, or neolithic uh, sites. These mm -hmm. stone circles and temples and monasteries, they're usually on these convergences of these ley lines. Uh, and it creates a geomagnetic anomaly. So that means that the, the magnetism of the space of the land is, is skewed. It is it is different. That's why people can have more spiritual experiences. Yeah. Obviously, mm -hmm. the ancient uh, priests and any spiritual adept would know that these are very significant when it comes to to consciousness. Yeah. And so um, I began to travel the world and go into these centers. And I'm right now in Tulum, which is another geomagnetic anomaly. Uh, there was a whole Mayan ancient civilization here that's aligned with the stars. And so I began to, um, my psychic memory activated and my, my perception deepened and it led me into a very unique pilgrimage, almost like the book, The Alchemist. And eventually it led me to the Belize jungle, which is again, a Mayan uh, it's a it's a place connected to the ancient Mayan civilization mm -hmm. and Guatemala, Tulum, Yucatan, etc. And um, in the Belize jungle, I began to go through activation. So I stayed by myself, didn't look anything up, just ended up in this jungle with the uh, elders of the Mopan Mayan tribe. And my body began to go through a series of activations. So what that meant is that in the east they will call it the kundalini but essentially it is your primordial life force that is dormant for most people or trapped or stagnant or suppressed or repressed by shame or guilt etc mm -hmm. which creates stag stagnation and or distortion in the geometry or the organization of how the body is circulating energy within the nervous system so i began to clear it and activate it and it began to change my perception of reality um what we would call in uh, in the ancient hebrew language would be called the merkaba which is what we call the light body that means yeah. that we get out of a separation of uh, the compartmentalization of our intellect in our physical body and we began to become more whole that means that we're in a sensory uh, awareness um and our we have more space in our in our reality that's yeah. okay i can still hear you yeah, that's and, good. Okay, I'm going to start talking. So I'm just ignoring that picture. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. And um, and so this was interesting because I raised my energy quite significantly. And what was interesting around this time is that there was this really strange woman that, that I got recommended to talk to. And she she prophesied about this whole experience happening. And mm. she said that mm -hmm. you're going to learn this really unique trauma work. But at this time, I activated all these powers and people would be in my presence and they would begin to go through like past life regression just by sitting in my presence and very intense mystical things started wow. happening. To me. Um, however, I, I didn't have necessarily the wisdom to understand it. I had the, the, the discipline, but not the wisdom. And my prayer always has been for wisdom. Something in my heart, my husband, that was my prayer. It was wisdom. And... Well, first it was power. And then I realized his wisdom. wisdom. Wisdom is the way to go. Because what is wisdom without power? It's not power. Yeah. And yeah. what's wisdom without love? It's not wisdom. And I, I found this out later on. So I began to I realize that I didn't have the wisdom and I had the power. And I began to crumble. So all of what, all of this energy I had began to surface my inner child trauma. And my ancestral trauma, the trauma mm -hmm. of uh, peoples, um, earth-based peoples and the colonization of earth-based peoples and the massive darkness that, that our human species have been through, um, which was very interesting because then I began to attract very good friends and colleagues of mine now 
uh, to investigate the nervous system in a very in-depth way around trauma, which led us to the understanding of how the distortions manifested in our psyche and why we behave the way we have or do uh, collectively, um, why we feel separate, not only from each other, but from our own bodies, our own culture, our own language, and begin to investigate it within my own self while I was going through a dark night of the soul for multiple years, about five years. Okay. And, and it taught me to basically repair my nervous system from, um, from a fragmentation which manifested in anxiety and depression and hyperanalyzation and all these types of things that happen when you're not stable in your in your psychology and uh, i began to repair it so i began to learn very sophisticated ways to uh, basically regulate your nervous system understand where traumatic memories come from identify them and to transmute them and so we developed a whole trauma healing method and I began to teach students around the world. And what was interesting about this is that it was actually preparing me for my, my real life's work is which I'm presenting now to the world. And it led me through this with the foundation of this trauma work to, to what I call gnosis or inner alchemy. Yeah. So it is an ancient art that most people like really are attracted to this word alchemy, but they don't know what it is. It's very mystical and, um, and unidentified. Pardon. pardon it's okay. Ignore, let's go ignore everything around us. No, okay. Let's, ignore it all. Okay. That's okay. like, that was happening on the planet Earth. There's a lot of, a lot of stuff is going around, but we are just in the store. We are sailing that boat, just bringing the shine and light for the rest of the souls. Let's go ignore it. The, all yeah. the bleaches and all the barking the dogs. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just so, focus. 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 So, Time is so my, my work really has come full circle, and I'm just newly now presenting it in a in a in a very intentional way. Uh, so it led me to gnosis. Gnosis is an ancient mystical word from the uh, mystical side of Christianity, and it means true knowledge. It means the actual knowledge that the prophets have taught, and it's the actual knowledge that can be quantified in biochemistry and what we call now quantum mechanics and quantum physics. But this is not an abstract uh, understanding. It's actually practically uh, expressed through biochemistry. So biochemistry basically uh, the chemistry in our body relates to the same elements that are in the earth so the fire the earth the water the air right our consciousness has a direct thread to these elements and uh, we call this the ether right so our consciousness can be understood as the ether which is which is used in old old magic traditions but it's essentially we're related to it all so our consciousness is intertwined with everything that exists. And so to understand this, the knowledge is actually what to, is the template and the organization of your nervous system. So it's the activation of your potential energy, the cultivation of this energy, which is mean cultivating it, raising it, fine tuning it, attuning it, and then organizing it in the specific way with the knowledge so that you become your super self. And your super self is basically an increased cognition. It is, is a, it's clarity in mind, body, and spirit. It's gnosis, knowledge of self, where you're channeling your soul. We call this clear cognizance. You're mm -hmm. channeling your unique soul. Your soul has a certain blueprint, has a certain memory throughout time and space. And so yeah. most people are channeling their, their, their soul is getting uh, siphoned by their intellect or by their conditioned uh, body uh, that has either trauma or certain programs that were given to us by, our, by the society. But when, the, when we start to, the soul and the awareness begins to use this soul to express itself and we train the body and the mind to basically be one with our soul, that's the unification of consciousness within the body. And that's the whole point of this human existence. This is what we call the vesica Pisces. This is what we call the activation of the masculine and the feminine. This is where yeah. we become whole. And I feel like this is why I'm so passionate about it is because I have come to an understanding that I could teach and demonstrate instantaneously that actually gives people their power back. 
And that's exciting because it's not a dogma. It's not some hypothetical thing. It's not difficult. It's quite simple and it can make sense. And in fact, if it doesn't make sense, I can show you, you know, and that's really cool because I feel like we're in a crucial time right now in humanity. It's what this podcast is about. And people are so, the, there's a mass collective of human beings that are so disconnected from mm -hmm. their sense of meaning, sense of understanding of their ancestry, can disconnect it from their bodies, disconnected from each other and everybody is in mentally projecting ideas of life that are uh, and others and themselves that are just basically an imagination massive big imagination not saying the imagination doesn't play a part in our perception but it's just it's a, it's the imagination that's disconnected from any sense of practical source or context context of reality and so what happens is that there's lack of meaning if there's lack of meaning to this there shows that there's lack of connection and so what so then they're going to create technologies that are demonstrating lack of connection and meaning which is creating digital identities and avatars and this fucking stupid bullshit that really is not yeah. it doesn't i mean it's like okay we're gonna play video games our whole life is that yeah, what just... we came here to this plan to play a fucking video game when we haven't even discovered our potential as human beings. And what I'm saying to say is like, wow, actually there's, there's a number of people. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of spiritual people that are separating from each other too, because they have dogma. And they're still dealing with their trauma, but we're discovering the potential of our existence. That is actually way more enjoyable than going this technological route. And in fact, I'm not against technology. We can use technology because oh, we yes, actually yeah, have the course. wisdom to use uh, how, uh, to amplify uh, the greatness of the human nervous system, not to replicate it and use it in some ignorantly disconnected way. And so I'm passionate about this. And we need more voices in this space and more demonstration of human connection and the power of human connection. Um, so that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Yeah, that's definitely, we need to know how to use it. We, ha we have to have that wisdom inside us. And that knowledge, because otherwise we can use, actually, there's lots of, I don't know how to say, that's not really human, just they're using the devices from the wrong way, and definitely wrong way. But let me just said that about the creation, you created your own beautiful life. That's amazing. How did you do that? And how long does it take? Because some of the people just only watch some of the souls watching and saying, oh, cool. Oh gosh, I couldn't do that. That's very quick. Or maybe I would like to wait ages or maybe call by human life on the planet Earth and I'm not going to create it, anything. Is that true? Yes. Well, that's the first step is creating your life. And that's what's so beautiful about this is that that's each, each individual's mission is to create their life. And the life actually that you have now is partially your creation either purposely or by default and if it's by default it's because you weren't aware enough that you had the power of creation and you were sold that someone else had the power over you and so we have given our power to all these other people to create our lives and that's why we're in these contradictions and we're like hey why we're frustrated we're angry we're repressed we have our rage repressed because we've given our power away like it wasn't right. Leaders were supposed to give power to us and help us with our vision, with the vision of where to channel our power. But instead, the leaders of our reality and that influenced our parents and unconsciously influenced us has taken power away from us and has brought us into a creation of our life that is like a fucking prison sometimes, you know, in the worst, in the worst way. Um, obviously it's not like that for everybody. Some people are fine, you know, but let's just say they're so much better and they don't know it because, um, we we sold the power away. We sold our free will for some idea and, um, and that's okay. You know, because in fact, like I was just speaking with a client and she just went through a very hard time in exiting a relationship. I mean, super abusive time. And now she got her power back and started taking control over her life the last three years. And she's shining and glowing. And now she's ready to go step into a leadership, pro, uh, leadership role where she took the three years for herself. Now she's stepping in a leadership role. She's ready to go. And, and all her friends are like, 
oh, I'm so sorry for you. And she's like, what do you mean? Like, I'm freaking <laughs> so grateful because yeah. that pain brought her into a willfulness that brought her into a whole new reality of connection. So it is a part of a transformational journey. So even as I acknowledge the misuse of power from our so-called leaders, they're not leaders at all because that doesn't define a leader. When someone's misusing power, they're not a leader. They're not the true essence of the leader. That They're false. It's false. Yeah. But it's a perceived leader. So even though I'm acknowledging that, it has nothing to do with them. Because, in fact, it's our opportunity uh, to transform. Mm -hmm. And it is a part of a creation process and the transformational process to go through um, unconsciousness into the abyss, which is this, like, challenging unknown scary place into the connection to who we are into rising into who we are into creating who we are mm -hmm. and so it is a beautiful process that all of us have access to if we're willing to take that call sorry i just want to check and again yeah that's gone it's coming back again i was so funny faces of me and i was like oh were they playing the game with me today they would like to test me if I'm just like, giving the power away or maybe I'm giving up. Oh, no, I'm not giving up. Definitely. No. I'm creating my that's own it. reality. That's right. Uh, so that's a creation. That's a cre we're creating. We are just only producer. We are the creator of our own life. So definitely. And how long does it take? Definitely. How long does it take? How, 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 how you can... I'm not saying the advice. Yeah how you can say to the human, how you can empower them and how yeah. you can uplifting them up or just only give a little bit of encouragement in their souls, how they yes. can yeah. create their own life. Yeah, you know, it takes, it takes a real decision. The first step is like really decide. And guess what? You're going to be tested. You're going to, your body's going to not listen to you because you haven't, been listening you know you say all right body let's go and your body's not going to listen your body's yeah. conditioned so like first of all have real compassion for yourself but like you need to train your body you need you need to get out of your your day-to-day -day rhythm and wake up earlier go to sleep later stop responding or reacting the way you react and respond make some decisions and create some novelty so that you can start to um expand your consciousness like so for example your body is uh, our consciousness and our body is very adaptive so if it's doing the same thing it goes to sleep and stay unconscious so you have to create ways to adapt that means be awake stay awake stay aware stay awake stay aware right stay awake stay aware and the concept that that you must understand is that you have to generate energy that means that you have to raise your vibration you can do that by, by yes. keeping your body hydrated, right? And really being conscious about how you're eating. You can do that by uh, moving your body, by breathing into your body, by doing novel things and learning new skills, by reading, by writing, by speaking mindfully. Raise your vibration. What you will do by doing that is then create space in your reality for some kind of divine intervention to meet you. The whole key is for you to meet this meeting point of a synchronicity. Synchronicity is like a happenstance that moves you, that a conversation, right? A conversation. Something will come into your life and it will touch you. And you're going to start creating new feelings new ideas, new creative energy. So we have to decrease stress. When you decrease stress, the creative thinking mind opens. And when you creatively think, then you're, then you're going to change your reality. Your reality is going to start to open up new opportunities. So do whatever you need to do to decrease stress. Say no to it and start to think. As you start to think, you're going to create a meeting point that's going to change the way you feel. And then an opportunity is going to open up for you to escape that dimension and go into a new dimension. The last bit I would say is start to bring your hand to your heart the way I got out of it. And it took me, uh, it took me a little while. 
right? Mm -hmm. But eventually, this is how I created energy. I kept my mind focusing on my heart as many times throughout the day as possible. I would set timers to do heart breaths. Put my hand on my heart, breathe in my heart for, for three minutes, right? In four seconds, out six seconds, right? And generate a feeling of love, kindness, compassion, anything that creates a feeling of connection or warmth, fire, focus on the fire element in the heart you're going to create a field around your heart it's going to calm your mind calm your stress and then you're going to creatively think you're going to have that meeting point something's going to change and you're going to find yourself out of this dimension and, and you're not even going to know because you're going to be here in the future self it's yeah, going to so be how, gone yeah that's beautifully so how how the souls knows that in different dimensions because some of of them didn't really know what is a dimension or something like that. How, how we can see that changes in our life? Okay, so the way that you can understand dimension is basically a space, a feeling of a space. Mm. So look yes. around your room, right? Okay, and the way it feels, right? You can think about your life. You can sense into your life, okay? Is it heavy or is it light? Okay, what's strange, mm. right? What what look into your reality now? Okay. Is it contracting and dense and like or is it like expanding? Okay. It's the sense of space. That's yeah. a dimension. Okay. So what happens is you become more sensitive and you begin to sense space. So you wouldn't put yourself in space, in a space that is dense and contracting, or yeah, your heavy. life if it's dense and contracting, that means that it's in your space. So you're anyone that's out of integrity. That has lies or secrets or or any kind of anger and all this, it's creating density in your space. Yeah. Because okay. it's emotion. Right. So that's that's the dimension, right? Yeah. As you clear that and you begin to realize, oh, I don't want to be in this dense space, then you are clearing that. Then you literally will be in more expansive spaces <laughs> where you can breathe Beautiful and see. Space. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You will you, you will you will honor the space and you won't you won't even entertain certain things or you'll channel it quickly so it gets out of your space because you want more space and it's just like as if you go to a courtyard in Paris you know you go to a courtyard like a museum and you'll see how they create this space and you yeah. can almost think better in the space you know because it's the space and then you look at the apartment complexes in like a city and it's like hmm right and they put you in this little Sorry. box yeah. right. So it's about space. Dimension is space. Basically, the feeling of space is a simple way to describe a dimension. Yeah, that's beautifully said because how I can just see dimensions, like a, my point of view, my perception. So like you as you said, friend Joseph, around the, how you're feeling. Sometimes you feel really dense. That's your sense of that low that dimension. Mm-hmm. But sometimes you can feel like you can fly. You can just only jump over the sky or over the cloud and say, oh gosh, where I am? And everything is, seems completely different. Yeah, like you said, yep. that that senses that the sixth sense. We need to um, bring it back. We need to unravel again. We need to relearn because we know that stuff inside us, definitely. How we can bring the much more peace? I know that through the breathing, because when we just only start breathing, we calming ourselves, the stress release, and etc. Is any different tools, spiritual tools, yeah. the human tools we can do yeah. about the peace? Yeah, yeah. So. This may not, it's like this may not be the answer that everyone wants to hear, but it is the answer that will work. Okay. okay. So you know how like the those that are like into making money, right? They'll say, put in the work and you'll get rewarded, right? Put mm-hmm. in the work, right? So to get peace, peace is like it's like a reward for resolving and addressing. What is bringing you out of peace? Peace is. Peace always is. But we are doing things or not doing things that are taking us away from peace. And we leave those things lingering. And that is the reason why we're not in peace is because it's draining our energy. And even though it's out of sight, out of mind, it's still in the field. You don't, it hasn't been resolved. So that means yeah. if your ex-boyfriend, ex-girlfriend has hatred and pain towards you and you're reacting, da, 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 you're still, they're taking you out of peace. Peace is, peace always is. It's just, it's just, you learn two things in life. You learn to address things immediately 
that will take away your peace and you're mm-hmm. going to sit in the fire and emotion until it's resolved in you. And if it's not, can't be resolved with the other, it's fully felt, fully understood, fully acknowledged, fully yeah. you learned, right? Acknowledge, feel, and learn the lesson. And it will release from your space. And if you can do it with the others and you stick in the fire of intimacy until it's done, you'll get closer back to your peace. So you learn to address things immediately. And then you learn to not do shit that takes you out of your peace, to not engage with it. You're not yeah, interested in it. That's the maturity of consciousness. And then you become the enlightened one. Because it's not by like necessarily like, you get all your energy back and you're in an exalted state of awareness just by resolving things immediately, habitually, not being afraid to see, feel, and learn. And then yeah. you don't do things that take you away from your peace. And you'll, you'll have more energy and you'll be in peace. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. So this is my challenge to everybody else. If, you're, if something is taking you out of peace, especially if it's a relationship, you need to address it in your own heart first. Look at it honestly. Listen. Feel. Understand it. Receive the lesson and then make a commitment and a devotion to yourself to actually take action on the new lesson. And and if you are congruent, meaning you're honest with yourself, your body will will give you peace. You'll release karma. You'll release the karma. If you have to address it with the other person, fucking do it as best as you can, even if it's messy. Try your best. Be sincere. Release this karma from your life so that you can come back to peace. When you're in peace, you're not in stress. When you're in peace, you open up the creative thinking function in your brain, which is basically going to take you on a wave of thinking that's going to raise your vibration till you find the meeting points of synchronicity that will change your life and give you opportunity to enter into a new space. That's how it works. Yeah, that's amazing. I was actually that's amazing. That's beautifully said. But some of us, say, no, 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 no. I couldn't. I couldn't. Okay, you've got a free will. You've got a, your own choice. That's your life. That's your creation. You can create a beautiful life, or you can stay wherever you would like to stay and keep blaming and doing the stuff. I would like to say because when you've been talking about the peace, there was something which came to my head. It's like a, in a hot, 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 sunny day, you can put a lots of coats on yourself, and you will be covering yourself, covering, covering. Take it out. Just only throw it away, that coat away, because that's a really hot, sunny day that gives you that happiness and uh, joy and uh, love. So just throw it away, that unwanted feelings, and transmit it for the good and, and actually uncover that peace inside you. And how about the shining? How we can shine and bring much more light? So this is the last question, and we're going to wrap yeah. it up. Yeah. Wow. Well, it was so amazing about biochemistry bio is your nervous system your body and chemistry is is chemistry it is the changing of of the of the uh of the substance inside your body what's so amazing about this is that your body responds to your awareness that's directed we call that focus and uh memory or imagination So concentration and imagination, okay? So if your body is going to respond, chemically speaking, to concentration and imagination, so what would be a a practical knowledge on how to use these two inner technologies? What would be practical? Okay, well, what if I imagine something really nice, you know? What if I concentrate on my heart, my body? Okay, and I imagine love, okay? Okay. So imagine light, imagine joy, imagine happiness. And it's literally going to change the chemistry in my body where I will feel these things. If I do it more, it will amplify these things. And if I amplify it, then my body is going to literally transform and heal and regenerate. And then I will have more energy to shine. The reason why we're not shining Mm -hmm. is because we're stressed. We're giving our energies and and, um, the external world is highly involved in uh in taking our attention and uh making us think a certain way which is draining our energy even more so what if you just like actually stop paying attention out there 
and just say, hey, I'm going to focus in here and create these most amazing, juicy, blissful imaginations where I'll start to feel these things. The more I do that, I'm going to feel more of my energy. I'll have more energy. And that energy is going to glow and radiate off of me. And then you take what you have inside and you literally imbue it. Imbue means like, you know that feeling like, okay, say if like you and I were in a relationship and you're mad at me, right? But you're like, you don't, let's say we're in public and you don't want to say anything, but you go, mm, you know, you just nudge mm -hmm. me with your feeling, you know, yeah. you know what I mean? You're like, mm, yeah, just definitely. nudge me. Stop that shit. Like you just nudge it, right? It's the same demeanor, the same nudge, but in love. That's how you give love is the same thing. Mm. Mm. You know, you nudge it off your body. So when you have this energy and you go and engage in your external world, mm. you give the oomph, give them oomph from that place that you are cultivating, that you're creating and generating within. Yeah. Mm. 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 You just give it. And guess what? When you give it from that place, it comes back. And then you look. I'm looking. I'm trained by awareness to look. Like I'm looking at the animal, you know, the dog here. It makes me happy. I'm going to look at it more and I'm going to feel that happiness. You have permission to feel your feelings, especially the good ones. Look for things. Look at the leaf. Look where the energy is and pay attention to that and absorb it. Right? And then when you go and engage with your world, shine. Emit light. Mm, Umf it out. Yeah. yeah. There, are, there are lots of things I would like to say we need to learn. We need to learn, actually, really learn because we knew it. We know on the soul level, we know everything, but we've got that amnesia inside us. But from the, our um, animals, like from the dog and from the monkeys, you remind me that that sounds like just only giving that say that love. You would like to, would like to go out from your body and just only shining and lightening up the world. Just only, it reminds me that the monkey, because that's unconditional love coming from the, any kind of the animals. They're not just only analyzing anything is good or bad. They're just only feeling. They've got that instinct inside them. Exactly. So Exactly. And we very, like, listen, we are this, like, physical creature with a spinal cord and a brain and sens sensitive body mm -hmm. that, that responds to the external environment. Like, stop thinking the body is unholy. The body is fucking amazing. Like, bring your soul into the body. Get out of your imagination. Just because people are cut off from the head, you know, they're cut off. From the, they're cut off. <laughs> yes. You know, it's just like they think that that the intellect is like the, somehow higher consciousness, and it's ignorant because it has no, if it has no root, no context, no substance, it has no power. It's false. It's yes. a false power. Come back into the body. Enjoy your body. Experience the body. Bring your love into the body. Bring your consciousness into the body. If you really think you have a powerful mind, okay, how about you bring your whole body into your mind then? How aware are you? Can you handle the sensations of your body and transmute it into your higher consciousness thoughts? You know, I know this is a, this is a deeper, yeah, com deeper yeah. conversation, but like, um, yeah, just like what you're saying, just bring it into the body. Enjoy it. We are like, not like we're animals. Animals are sacred and beautiful. Why do you feel like there's because you can think? They're much more higher dimensions as, as a human. They're in a different dimension and different space experience Amazing of space. One. Right? Maybe consciousness isn't linear like this. Maybe it's very um circular and it ripples outward. All of these spaces are valid and beautiful. Yeah, but the only thing I would like to only add at the end. I love the animals. I love my cat. She's amazing. She's a really beautiful spiritual being. So every time she's showing me how, and she reminds me every time, how I'm supposed to love unconditional, loving unconditionally. So don't have any condition, just only coming in the morning, just giving a hug, and that's it. She doesn't want anything. Oh, maybe she wants some treats. But anyway, that's another story. But we need to learn that stuff from um, our yeah. animals. Yeah, yeah. We can learn a lot from animals. In fact, many of us are like animals. Many of us have animals that live within us. And oh, yes. and uh, and actually very important. So in northern shamanism, there is nine worlds. And this can be understood as nine dimensions. So nine feelings of 
time and space, right? And uh, basically, one of them is the natural world. And we have an advocate, we have an, a part of ourself in each of these dimensions. So yeah. that means that like in, in the animal dimension, we are there as well. Yeah. And we are, we have a, a sense of that experience. And so um, we have an animal that lives within us too. And we can learn a lot from the animal. In fact, we can use the animal. Animals protect us. Why do you think dogs protect us or animals that love us, they protect us? The same inner essence in you that is your animal, your feline, your wolf or whatever it is, that also protects you. Because yeah. what meets the eye as a human being isn't what, is only there there's so many layers to our consciousness that we don't see the more you see and you look at somebody's face you see so many other things so we are many things we're multi-dimensional creatures yeah yeah i completely agree with you but also i would like to add we could we can't see out in our physical eyes that stuff we've got here is not giving us proper vision which is when you're seeing from the third eye so when you close your eyes you can see much more and you can sense much more but anyway, we can talk and talk and talk and talk. Let's go wrap it up. And then if anyone or who are watching us it would like to anything, any kind of the information or wisdom, knowledge would like to learn from Frank Joseph, just reach me out or just when you leave the comments below the video and we see what we can do for you. Would you like to say something to the audience uh, for the people who are watching us? The yes. Three words or something like that and then we can go. Absolutely. So regardless of where you are, whoever you are, where you are, whether wherever you are, you have a seed of potential in you. Nourish that seed as your main priority. Because this is the dream of life that was given to you. And regardless of your challenges and all types of things that you've experienced in your life. It's part of your story. It's part of the transformation, the creation process. Nourish your seed and you will realize yourself. That's what I got to say. It's more than three words, but. I know. You're always just saying shorter, shorter. But when you're just when you're opening your mouth, the words is just only pouring like the water. The beautifully holy water is coming out from, from inside you. Um, where the people can find you? The humans yeah. on the planet Earth. Uh, Yes, right now you can find me. Instagram, philosopher okay. warrior. One word, philosopher warrior on okay. Instagram. And my website for my mentorship programs that will eventually evolve into I'm building a whole mm -hmm. uh, site to document my work. It's light elite okay. dot global www.lightelite.global okay anyway i'm going to just only post it i'm going to just only leave it below this video on the youtube so the people just will be easy just when you go and press the button and you can find you thank you so much gabriella You're it's welcome. so nice to connect with you and thank you for what you do and your devotion to serve the greater good appreciate you thank you so much for coming and accepting my invitation again thank you